Hey folks, welcome to Saving the Hook. We're out here doing a little bit of late fall perch fishing. As you can see, we got our gloves on. We're dressed nice and warm. We got a little bit of snow flying, but this time of year, those perch can really stack up and put on the feed bag, so it's worth pushing through this cold weather to get at them. Oh, fish. Stop my glove there. There we go. A nice little perch. Whoop. See if you can Let's sit still for a second. Oh, what's a big fish. There he is. Yeah. Got him. Just when you think he's ready for the net, he turns that around. That was just a greedy fish. That was an angler skill. <laughs> That's probably my favorite part, eh? When you feel that tap and you set the hook and you feel that solidness. But he's heavy. Tell he's been eating pretty good out there. And we got ourselves a good salmon. People travel all over the world for these fish. So let's do that again. And let's face it, the Niagara River is a, is a buffet for fish. Let's get him back in the water. Setting the Hook with Brett Bochak is brought to you by Fish Envy and Live to Fish. There we go. There's a perch on. It feels a little, a little better one. Oh, let's see what we got here. There we go. Well, folks, welcome to Setting the Hook. We're out here doing some late fall perch fishing today. So you can see I got my heavy gloves on here because it's pretty chilly. And uh, we got our first decent perch in the box there. See if I can, there we go. Oh, sometimes you just got to take your gloves off there, folks. So there's a little late fall perch. Oops, there we go, we'll get him back in the water. Oh, that feels like a better fish. Got a little bit better on the hook set. There he comes. There we go. That's a, uh, that one there's a, oh, we're gonna keep just a few fish here today. Get those bulky gloves off. We're gonna keep a few fish for a meal. Uh, you know, we got a chance of catching some real big perch today as well, but if we get any really big, we're gonna let them go. Something like this here. You know, half a dozen of these or so will make a real nice meal. What a perfect eating size, I'd say. There we go. Oh, there's a good fish. All right. This one's driving a little harder on us here. Another nice little perch there. Oops. Oh, they're coming out of that water. It's pretty cold. That one's just big enough to eat, so put him in there. We're good keeping. Oh, fish. There we go. Another spunky perch here. I was just, uh, just put that one fish in the live wall there. We got another one on. Next cast out. Bait went down, hit bottom. And as soon as it got down there, we uh, got another one there. 
I think that's another one that'll probably go into the frying pan. What we've done here, we've caught a couple fish, so we actually hit the spot lock on the electric motor. So we're not moving. We've got a little bit of a breeze here. It's pushing us around. But having us on spot lock is going to keep us right on these fish until we stop catching them. Then we'll move again. That one feels a little heavier. Could maybe be one of those, uh, those jumbos here. Definitely got a little bit more attitude to it, a little bit more weight. Yeah, those long casts are definitely uh, definitely key here right now. Oh yeah, that's a better fish. That's a better fish. Oops. There we go, that's what we're looking for right there. Look at that folks. There's a that's what I call a that's what I call a jumbo perch. That's that's a good one. All right, let's see if we can get a few more of those. That last one actually hit it as, as it was falling. It got right down to the bottom, and uh, just before it got to the bottom, I felt a little bit of resistance. There's bites. Oh, there's one. Oh, this one's a little bit smaller. There we go. A little bit... Uh, so what we have here, it seems we have different year classes of fish. So we get some smaller fish, we got those mid-sized fish, which, uh, which we're going to keep a few of. Ones like this here. Oh, he's just a little small for the frying pan, so we're going to let him go and uh, gonna let him get bigger. That's funny, I had two hits, two or three hits before that. So I had a couple of hits there, and then finally I dragged into some weeds, but this is a good sign. What we have here is we have some weed that's uh, still green, and these perch will be in these green weeds. If you're pulling up weeds that are brown and dying off, that are that are dead, um, the fish probably aren't going to be in it. So, you know what? Catching a few weeds like this is good because it's telling us something. We're learning from it. So it looks like we're in the right spot when we got some green weed here. We're just starting to move a little bit here. Our bite kind of slowed down. So we're just moving a little bit here. And... Uh, my bait was actually sitting still when, when that fish picked it up. So when rigging these uh, soft plastics here, like this uh, Berkeley power bait, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bait, yeah, run it through the bottom, just through the top there. And it's just going to hang like that. There's one. There we go. All right. So you notice the sun came out a little bit here and the uh, kind of lost our breeze that we had. It's making fishing a little bit tougher. So now we're gonna have to make actually a little bit longer casts. And I've actually switched up to one of the Berkeley power baits. It's got a little bit of scent on it. And uh, seems to, uh, oops, seems to help us out a little bit. We're not getting hit as close to the boat as we were, so those longer casts, a little bit more light, uh, a little bit more light penetration there. So getting our baits away from the boat is starting to help us out a little bit. After a long day on the water, we got home, we got the boat put away, and we got one thing left to do. That's clean fish. We got a few perch here that we got to clean today, so perch are pretty easy to clean. I like to use my electric fillet knife here. What I do is flip that top fin up there. I'll kind of angle back towards the head, right down to the backbone. Now I can feel when I get to the backbone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to angle my knife. you don't go through the backbone there. You want to make sure right along the backbone, you want to get as much meat off that fillet as you can, but you don't want to go through the backbone and ruin it. Do the same on the other side. Just going to angle back behind the head, right down to the backbone, angle my knife, go right along the backbone, all the way down to the tail. Get rid of our carcass. 
what you want to do is take your knife, feel the rib cage right there. I'm going to kind of, kind of flay that rib cage off the fillet. Once I get about halfway through, I can hold the fillet down with my knife. Just kind of peel that rib cage right out of there. After the rib cage is gone, take off the skin. So I'm just going to kind of grab my finger down here. There you have beautiful perch fillet. Now if you can't get your fingernail in there, what you can do is you can take maybe a fork, just kind of grab the skin there, put the knife in there. set of bones right here on the bigger ones you want. I don't always do it, especially on smaller ones, but on bigger ones what you can do is just kind of, you'll feel them there with your finger. You can just kind of take your knife, a little cut there, just a little cut there. Get rid of that, take that out. And that's a nice beautiful Bonus perch fillet. Now that the fish are ready to be cooked, Dan from Love to Fish is going to show us a great perch taco recipe. So we finished filling the perch and rinsed the fillets. We're going to season the fillets, put those aside for a little bit, prep the rest of our toppings for our fish tacos, get the batter ready, and get cooking. So let's jump in. We're going to season the fillets with Montreal steak spice, salt, and some cayenne pepper. Once they're seasoned, we're going to put them aside and let them sit. So we're going to peel and dice half of a mango. Uh, no wait, avocado should go first. So we get some avocado into that bowl. Add some salt, cayenne pepper, and a dash of lime. Get all that mushed up. And now we put the mango in. quarter of a red onion, cilantro, chives, and then we mix it all up. We're going to cut some pickles into strips and grate some cheese. Make sure you grate extra because the kids. We're going to put the perch into a Tupperware container with some flour in it. We're going to shake that up. I like rotating the container while I shake to ensure that we get some nice even coverage. We're going to fill a pan with light oil like vegetable oil and a couple tablespoons of butter. And then we're going to throw that on the heat while we work on our beer batter. So you're going to add beer to your pancake mix until you get a consistency that is slightly runny but still sticks to the whisk. We're going to bring it over to the stove. Make sure our drying rack is ready. I'm gonna take the fish out of the flour, dip it in the beer batter, and then put it into the oil. We're gonna do about two minutes or so on each side, and then take it out and put it on the drying rack. Once it's on the drying rack, we're gonna squeeze some lime onto it and get ready to make our fish tacos. Okay, I know we've been saying tacos, but I'm actually making a burrito because you can fit more of the good stuff in there. So we're gonna add sour cream, grated cheese, two pieces of fish, salsa, red onions, pickles, some of the homemade guacamole, your favorite hot sauce, and then we struggle to wrap it. Another thing we're doing was not actually moving the bait with the reel. 
When we're casting out, we're kind of lifting up on that rod tip, moving that bait, reeling up that little bit of slack. That way you're always in contact with the bait. And if you happen to start moving your rod a little bit and you get a fish to grab it, you're actually already in the motion to set the hook. So it's very important to, there's some weeds there. Very important to uh, swim that bait with your rod tip and don't move the bait with your reel. There's a fish. Yeah, those long casts are definitely paying off now. So, got another fish down, got another boat coming in, looking for some perch too here. This one might be a little bit better. Well, maybe not. Maybe just, uh, you got down in the weeds for a second there, but you know what, still a nice perch. Oh, get him back in the water. And you know what, doesn't matter what size they are, as long as we're pulling back, it's fun. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, he's there. There we go. You know what, well, that wind just picked up a little bit. We got a little bit more of a ripple on here now, and uh, we're starting to get bit again. So it's, it's really interesting how when it, uh, the wind dies off, how it makes the bite tougher here. So, you know, we're fortunate not to have big wind, wait, uh, sorry, big waves today. But it's nice that we have this little breeze just to create a little bit of ripple effect, which makes light penetration down into the water a little more, a uh, little bit less light penetration. There's another fish. Wait, there we go. Oh, there we go. You know, when you're perch fishing out here, it's really important to have a rod with a, a fast tip on it. So the tip's a very sensitive tip on it, and you got some backbone on here for setting the hook into those fish. So especially when you get a, a bigger one than this, it's really important to be able to get a good hook set. So we're using a drop shot rod over here today, and one of the reasons we're using a drop shot rod is you want to make sure you use the right rod. A drop shot rod has a faster tip on it, and then it also has a good backbone on it. That faster tip allows you to feel those bites, and then the backbone allows you to set the hook and to play that fish as you're bringing it in. Oh. Oh, there we go. Maybe three times a charm. Three times the fish has picked that bait up, and I missed them all on this one cast. Four. There we go. Five times. Whether it's the same fish or not, I don't know, but I like to think the first couple were maybe bigger ones. But on that one cast, that's five five times I got hit. And uh, probably got that little guy to go, but we'll let him go and let him get a little bit bigger. There's, oh, there's one. Feels like a smaller one. But you know what? It's pulling back, and uh, we'll take every one we can get. We're going to let this guy go again, but uh, as I was saying, uh, just, just saying a little bit ago there, it's really important right now with this calmer water that we got to make these longer casts. Uh, you know, the fish get a little bit spooked sometimes with this calmer water that maybe they can sense the boat or feel the boat. We do have our electric motor in on anchor, so every now and then it's throwing off a little vibration. Making those long casts when the conditions come like this can be really key. No, we just made a little bit of a move, maybe 30, 40 feet. Um, just had a small fish there, we just hooked up again, so I've actually hit the, lock, uh, the anchor again. We're actually gonna stay right in this spot, keep casting through that area. There's a nice little fish there. There we go. Actually, once again on this one, I wasn't even moving the bait, I don't think. I think it was just sitting still when you picked it up. So maybe that's something we can key in on here. Casting out, letting your bait sit a little bit. Sit a little bit longer than what we were letting it sit before. There we go. Had a nice hit there, and 
actually felt like a real big fish for a perch. But you know what? I didn't get him. You know, I just got hit and I missed it. And then uh, about three or four seconds later, either the same fish or another fish picked it up. Now it's a small one here, but and there, there are lots of small fish around here. So you are getting picked at a lot. So you are missing a lot of fish and whatnot. But one of the things is with these, uh, these Berkeley power bait, I've caught at least, well, probably more than 20 fish on it. If I was using live minnows or worms or something like that, I would have gone through probably three dozen minnows by now. This is still the original one I put on. Um, you know, they got sent to them, fish grab them, they hold on to them. And it's a lot, uh, a lot more economical using something like this when you're, get, when you're catching fish on it than if I was using live bait. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You know, I've started doing something just a little bit different. Instead of just lifting with my rod, I'm actually shaking a little bit now, and it seems to be uh, seems to be working. So, see what we got here. Looks like. There we go. Not as big as our last one, but you know what? That's still a nice fish. And hook there. There we go. Yeah, hit that one. Well, uh, we'll take that one home with us. Well, that's just uh, just kind of shaking that line there, the slack line there. I'm not moving the bait as much, and they seem to be picking up on it a lot better than when I'm dragging the bait. This one feels a little bit better again. Not uh, not a jumbo, but you know what? It's uh, it's another fish. That's not bad. Oh, that's a good one. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, the weather's kind of got nice for us here, and we're still getting some decent fish. Well, this one you gotta have ready soon, too, right? Sorry? We wrapped it up, we don't need to wrap it up again, do we? Oh! 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 What happened there? Oh! I think, um, I think what happened there is I was just feeling a perch in, and I think a pike just grabbed it. Oh, it just lost the, whatever it was, it just came off. Yeah, there's our perch. <laughs> Since there's any marks on there, or? Could have been a uh, could have been a big largemouth bass or something that grabbed that, but uh, yeah, all of a sudden I'm reeling him in. You could tell it was a perch, and something bigger grabbed him. There's no teeth marks on him, so it's probably a big largemouth or something that grabbed him. Actually, upon further inspection, there you can see the teeth marks on him there. So it would have been a uh, big pike that grabbed him. There's another one. This one's uh, pulling back a little bit more. Might be a decent one. It's not one of those big jumbos that we're looking for, but it's going to be a decent one. Yeah. Keep them away from the pike down there. We're all good. There we go. Oh, that's, there we go. That one feels a little heavier. That, that one feels a little heavier. It's got some attitude. I like it. You know, fishing for these perch out here, it's very important to have a, a, a fast tip on your rod. So it's very limber, but and you'll be able to feel those bites. And then you got to have a little bit of backbone on it as well for when you're setting the hook. So this one, oh, hold still there. You know, you got a decent perch when you can... Uh, and you can look like a bass. So look at a really, really, real pretty little fish there. You know, they got those spots on them like a tiger and uh, orange fins underneath them. 
So that's why when we're musky fishing quite often, we like to throw a lot of baits with orange on them. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of fun out here. So we've caught a bunch of perch today and we've caught some big ones, we've caught some small ones. Ones like that right there are the best eating. If you're gonna keep a few to eat, keep them about that size there. Put that one in the live well. Of course, you want to let the little ones go. You want them to get bigger. You're not going to get much meat off them. But those big 12, 13, 14 inch fish, they're going to lay the most viable eggs and they're going to produce a nice brood stock. So you want to make sure we let those bigger fish go. Is that better? Oh, that one's got a little bit more weight to it. All right. You seen some loons? Oh, you seen some loons feeding over there. So I thought, well, you know what? We'll head over that way because there's probably some bait. And, uh, we just started heading that way and then we're hooked up. What do we got here? Oh, it's, oh he's hooked sideways, that's what. He got himself all wrapped up. He's got the bait in his mouth, but he turned on us and uh, came in sideways. He felt a little heavier than what he was. Still a nice perch though. I got one. Oh, damn, camera. There we go. All right, so it's, uh, things are picking up a little bit here. Almost every every other cast or so, we're getting a fish. And this one's gonna be a little bit better one, I think. It seems a little bit heavier. Got a little bit more spunk to it. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's not a bad fish. There we go. All right. Well, you know what, folks? It's been a lot of fun out here uh, fishing late fall perch today. And we'll see you next time on Setting the Hook. A half a dozen of these or so will make a real nice meal. What a perfect eating size, I'd say. That one feels a little heavier. Could maybe be one of those uh, those jumbos here. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Look at that, folks. There's a that's what I call a that's what I call a jumbo perch. That's that's a good one. Welcome to setting the hook road here. Doing a little bit of late perch. Or... <laughs> Hey folks, welcome to Setting the Hook. We're out here today doing a little bit of late perch fall fishing. That's not right. And we have a smaller hook with a sm so we can put a little bit smaller bait. Oh, ah, I just missed one. Uh, we have a little bit smaller bait on there. So with that smaller bait, we are able to get better hooks. Maybe we should just catch two fish there. And, uh, we got our first decent perch in the box there. See if I can. There we go. Oh! I, I gotta take my gloves off for that. You gotta get your boat put away and everything else. Then you gotta clean your fish. Kept a few pitch, uh, perch. Pitch, 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 pitch. After a long day on the water, you gotta get home. You gotta get you put away. You gotta get you put away. You know what a put away is. Is there something like that out here? What? We'll do that again on the next one.